Hey guys, how you doing? Welcome to another live stream. <clears throat> this is the Stay Creative live stream. Uh, who's in the chat? We got G Brown, got Vood Mania, got Stuart. Hey guys, got Finn Bogey, Ragnar Ragnarsson. Hey hey. Uh, yeah, welcome everyone. Uh, in this live stream, I'm going to be talking about the Stay Creative campaign. That is running it's back it's about to end it ends don't know when it ends start of next week maybe very soon so <clears throat> this is the kind of last chance to take advantage of the offer uh, and in this live stream i'm going to be trying to show you as much as i can from the campaign so i'm going to do a little intro now to tell you what's in it um, and then i'm going to start to make a remix um, I'm going to be working with the stems from the current Remix comp uh, that we've got running for our members at the moment. Um, they were introduced to it a couple of weeks ago. And more people in this chat now. Hey guys, hey Chrissy, hey LA Winter, Safe Nafe, Beyond Gratitude, Nami Tin, Bandy Tin, Bandy <laughs> Band Killy Begs, Matthias. Hey guys, hey everyone. Um, <clears throat> so yeah so we announced this remix comp to our members um two weeks ago the start of the campaign in a live stream um we do for anyone who doesn't know we do live streams for our members almost every week now uh, i do them once a month and uh, our other artists and tutors come in and do the ones in between so we've had some great people do them <clears throat> jar funk who's a new uh, guy on our site did an amazing one last week really really good um we have paul maddox doing them <clears throat> sepa rezo john tajada did one at the end of last year so yeah we've had some great ones um yeah so in this session <clears throat> i'm gonna i'm gonna build up a remix starting from actually working with the working with the stems uh in ableton live so yeah we're gonna start with some tips for for how to work with stems in the door so how to organize them how to warp them correctly um, then we're going to be working with loop cloud to build up parts for uh, the remix and i'm going to be using some of the samples from the atlanta future trap sample pack that we're, we're giving to our members this week as, as a little gift it's the bonus content uh, so yeah, we'll use a few samples from that and then just other samples that I search for in Loop Cloud. And I'm also going to synthesize a few parts. Um, and we're also going to be looking at some of the plugins available for free in the campaign. So yeah, some of the other things you get are um, <clears throat> Loop Cloud, uh, two months free subscription to Loop Cloud on the uh, artist plan. Um, <clears throat> if you want to find out more information about the campaign, there has been a link posted, by the way. Uh, I think it's pinned, actually, at the top, by the looks of things. Hey, guys, by the way, welcome anyone who's new. DJ Vivaldi, Darren, Simple Sam, Cosmic Olivia, Trevor Parker, Savan Katba. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, so follow the link and you can find out full details of everything. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, Loop Cloud offering two free months subscription on the artist plan uh, as well as oh and that gets you 1200 points uh, 10 free sounds a day and five gigabytes of cloud storage and if you're new to loop cloud then it's a package that comes with a standalone app uh, and plugin um, and basically a suite of plugins you also got two other instrument plugins which are really good too so we're going to look at the main app today and you also get a another little bonus free plugin which is Krotos simple concept synth so I'm going to show you that today as well um, <clears throat> also in the campaign you get two free plugins from plugin boutique DJ swivel spread which is a very handy multi-band stereo imager um, and isotope ozone elements which is an amazing uh, industry standard mastering tool uh, now in version 9, and Elements is a cut-down version with a few of the modules, including EQ, Imager, and Maximizer. So we're going to have a look at all of that in this session as well. And finally, <clears throat> last but not least, you get two 
three months of Beatport Link subscription, uh, which is an amazing opportunity to try out that for an extended time. Uh, and that gives you access to every track in their store, plus their brand new DJ web app, um, which I've been working on quite a lot recently. I've been doing DJ sets with it. I did one on the Beatport Twitch, along with a little lesson on it a couple of days ago. And I've also done a course on the site, some of you may have seen, uh, which is designed for total beginners. Um, but it goes from first steps with the software all the way to preparing and performing your first set. Um, <clears throat> and we're also providing that for free as part of the promotion. So if you're an existing member already, then you can redeem that course for, for lifelong access to that. So yeah, that's everything that comes with the campaign, I think. Let me know in the chat, anyone if I've missed anything. <laughs> um, and yeah, enough enough rambling. Let's let's get on with making some music. So just get my headphones. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um got a brand new live project. I will start shouting as soon as I put my headphones on. Sorry if that was a bit loud. Just gonna drink a bit as well. So here's a brand new live project. And I've got the stems here. Um, you see there aren't too many. So nice and easy to work with. Um, but what I do before I import them it might be different if you're working in other doors, but one of the things I advise turning on is in the record, warp and launch tab. And I say turning on, it's actually it's turning off if you've got it turned on. And it's the auto warp long samples option. Um, it, it'll just save you a bit of time basically if you do it this method. So if you turn that off, then when you drag in all of the stems to the default project, I'm going to drag them onto separate tracks. So when you do this, if you hold down the command key, they'll move onto separate tracks instead of, you know, one after the other on the same track. And there we have all of the stems. And if I click on them, you can see down here, none of them are warped. The warping's turned off. So they're all just as is laid out uh, on different audio tracks there. So now, if we set the project to the tempo, if you don't know what the tempo is, you can always just play through one of the stems and hit the tap tempo until you get a sort of an average appearing up the top there. Excuse me, but I know the tempo is one, two, four, so I'm just going to set that. And now if I just click anywhere, hit play. It's such an amazing track. <laughs> I haven't actually mentioned that yet, have I? But it's um, it's Dom Howard or, or Ruckspin, as he's known. It's a track off his new album, Songs for the Time Being. And the track's called Over You. Um, absolutely amazing song. And yeah, if you want to check out the rest of the album, go to SoundCloud or Spotify. And yeah, look, do a search for Ruckspin. Ruck, R-U-C-K, Spin. And yeah, and look for the album songs for the time being you can also go to our blog and look up um <clears throat> either the remix comp post or um yeah or there's a ruckspin featured artist um article as well because he did a live stream for us recently so yeah that's the original track and another good thing about it here is that all the levels haven't been normalized on the stems so you don't need to, you know, they're not all really loud. You don't need to turn them down or anything. Just having all of the faders here at Unity Gain uh, means that it's a decent level on the master. Um, I say decent, obviously there's not much headroom there, but it's not overloading or anything. So next thing I would do is just select all of the tracks here and then hit warp and then set it to a mode like complex so the, the quality is a bit higher um, and that means now everything's going to stay where it is timing wise 
But if I change the tempo to something, let's just go up to 170, just to show you like drum and bass speed. It's such a great track, it would just work at any tempo, <laughs> really. Um, so I'm going to do something at 140. <clears throat> but you can see, because I selected them all and I warped them there, um, when I then um, change the change the tempo, it just stays locked. So really, really, really nice parts to work with. The danger, of course, in doing a remix like this is that um, you just want to use all the parts or you, know, you might be tempted to do a, a remix where you just slap a different drum loop over the all of the parts and call it a remix, which as I explained to my members, you're not really allowed to do <laughs> if you want to get, a, if you want to win, you want to get an original uh, track. Um, oh, the prizes, by the way. What are the prizes? Yeah, the prizes for the remix comp are a year's membership on producer tech, um, several plugins. You have to check the. I've forgotten what the plugins are. Check the um, producer tech blog, and you'll see a list of the plugins. There's a load of plugins. Um, there's a thousand loop cloud points uh, to the winner. Five hundred points each to the two runners up. There's also feedback from Ruxpin himself on a live stream after the deadline, um, which is end of, end of May, middle of, middle of May. Um, and I think that's it. Yeah, check the blog though, but it's awesome prizes. Um, but yeah, <clears throat> obviously you want to do something a bit more creative with this if you want to win. So, you know, go through and, and find the sounds that are going to work in your style. And you can use all the parts if you like, but just get as creative as you can with them, which means, you know, getting into effects, getting into editing and making them work with whatever style that you're changing the track to. So I'm changing it to, to trap. And there's a few sounds, actually, before we get to that, I'm just going to quickly organize them because this is something that you're definitely going to want to do. So there's two FX, there's basically about four groups here I worked out. You've got two FX sounds, you've got your kind of um, builds and your hits. Another one as well, but this one has some really interesting Foley on, which Ruxpin explained in a live stream for members a few weeks back is actually a live recorded bus stop he was sat at. It's quite quiet, but so he's like recorded people talking at a bus stop um, and then edited it loads to make it kind of swell and be in time with the with the beats and it's very, very low in the actual track. Um, but I've, I've started to do a house remix myself already and I've kind of made a big deal of this by, by really boosting it and adding a lot of um, distortion to it and then filtering it and ducking it to create a sort of side chaining effect to add a lot of interesting kind of top end and character to my, to my track. So yeah, so here's your two kind of FX tracks. I'm just going to group them call them FX. Of course, you can you can color all this to make it easier for yourself as well. It's a different yellow, wasn't it? There we go. Your FX tracks. Um, there's four. I should just get the drums up here. It's only one drums track, and I, I don't think I'm going to use it. I'm just going to mute it. Unlikely to really use the drums, I would say, in a, in a remix. Um, so let's get rid of that. Um, vocals wise, there's four tracks. We've got the lead, we've got sample vox, we've got backing vocals and harms or harmony. I'll drag them all to the top under the effects. Uh, group them as well and call that vox. And again, I'm just going to color them blue. So, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm shooting through this really quickly, but, oh man, I'm colorblind today. Different one again. There you go. Uh, yeah, so you've got those two effects, you've got two vocals, and then there's just these ones left, and these are uh, three synth parts. You've got sub, 
mid and then your kind of top synths where most of the action is kind of going on uh, and then you've got guitar and keys so these are kind of your acoustic sounds you call them acoustics and color them both orange um, and then yeah and then these synths at the end there's your synths so yeah just just a good idea really if you if you're making a remix to kind of organize it as much as you can what should we do then we'll do them in purple there we go nice organized so i'm just going to pick a few of the sounds then before we switch over to kind of adding loop cloud um, to build up some other sounds to go with them and I'm just going to pick some of the synth sounds and FX so I haven't been paying much attention to the chat what you guys saying uh, I'm sure like I'm sure our guys hope that well I hope our guys are answering any questions you have yeah looks like it yeah you're answering each other's questions that's nice all good yeah sorry I will jump onto the chat occasionally just to see what's going on um, <clears throat> but hopefully our guys can handle any of your questions or the majority of them um, so so yeah let's just go through a few of these different synth sounds then so I really like these tops but just to show you the way they're arranged in the track you've got a sub sub that comes first And then you've got this mid one, which is kind of shadowing it just after. And then you've got the cool one on the top here, playing an actual chord. Really, really nice. <clears throat> so I'm actually just gonna kind of copy out that bit. So I just drag over it, Command E to split it, Command C to copy it, and then I just take it out to the end here. Now, there's lots of different ways of doing remixes of course I'm not saying you have to do it this way I'm just showing you the way actually it's just the way that I happen to do this house remix um, I went in found the bits I wanted and then just copied them to the end here and then started working with some loops and I got some ideas going kind of separately at the end and I just dip in to the bits I wanted to kind of add to this so I kind of found some effects here um, I think that's really nice so again just copy that out I think I used that one as a fill um, I was going to use one of this oh <laughs> sorry I had the wrong one soloed there um, It's so low. It's so uh, low here. I'm gonna have to boost the gain. Try and check out where this bit actually is. Yeah. So kind of these bits are quite nice. So I copy them over. Get rid of that one because that was just me copying the wrong one over. And and some of these hits as well. This one. That one's really nice. And I thought that one could be nice. Kind of reversed. as a fill so to reverse it I'm first going to just consolidate it command J just so it's not uh, before I did that by the way you can see down here it's actually just keeps the whole sample it just trims it to those points so if I reverse it or re reverse the whole thing so if I consolidate it instead it creates a new sample that's command J or the keyboard short or the uh, <clears throat> context menu by right clicking consolidate and then once that's done hit reverse and you've got a nice kind of riser could be interesting but it is sustaining a different chord the one from the very end so I'm going to use that 
possibly as a slightly shorter sweep. Anyway, I thought we'd just work with the, just a couple of parts at first. Something like that. Um, and yeah, get, let's get a vocal in there as well, actually. How are we doing for time? I'm aware that um, I don't want to keep, don't want to make this too much like our member live streams where I tend to take the, have a very slow pace and uh, go on for a few hours. Uh, and this one we've got quite a lot to get through and I'm not going to focus entirely on live. Obviously, I'm going to switch to Loop Cloud in a minute and then we're moving on to the plugs after that. So, <clears throat> so yeah, let's just check out a couple of the vocals as well. Now the ones I really like are actually the kind of um, backing vocals. Let's just put the lead at the top here and the next one is sort of this harmonies. I held my breath over you Don't say what the devil over you But he's inside it's where he'll stay Amazing, amazing voice. I forgot the name of the vocalist. It's Lily Lily someone. Um, yeah, check it out. And it'll say so on the track. Really good vocals. He works with the best artists, the best vocalist. So you got the kind of main vocal, you got the harmonies, and then this kind of slightly more muted backing vocals. And then finally, this sample box, which is much more kind of atmospheric. It's got these hits, um, which are really interesting. I'm going to crop them out. And then also that bit after. Pretty interesting. Um, you can hear that really working in a sort of trap and sort of future beats kind of style. So, um, yeah, let's just. Let's get a beat it now. Let's get loop cloud on top of this. So <clears throat> I'm going to go to the MIDI track here. Get my plugins. Loop cloud. Add it to the MIDI track there. Now, obviously, some of you might be completely new to loop cloud. I've done a ton of different tutorials on it, and I'm about to do a course on it. So that's going to be out in a couple of weeks. Um, there are also obviously free tutorials available via uh, Loop Cloud themselves, <clears throat> via the um, via the site, and also tons on YouTube. But um, my course is going to be going in a lot more detail. Obviously, we've broken up into sections, and my aim is to kind of produce a whole track. And I'll probably do that mostly in the door. But I was even thinking of showing you how much you can do by producing a sort of whole track within Loop Cloud itself, because it is possible. Um, you've only got eight tracks, <laughs> so definitely have to use some loops to do that, to do a full track, but um, there's so much you can do in it. Anyway, let's get into it and I'll show you. Um, so <clears throat> here's the plugin, and once you've added that to your project, it means that the Loop Cloud app, which is this standalone app here, <clears throat> connects to Ableton Live. <clears throat> Excuse me. So it's connected to Ableton Live in the bottom corner there, and what that means is the the software matches the BPM of your <clears throat> of your live project, so you can't actually change it. And that means that when you're browsing for samples, they tempo lock with live, which is completely awesome. <clears throat> Excuse me. Completely lost my voice earlier in the week, so <clears throat> right, so first of all let's just check out a pack. Obviously one way of going here would just be to Search for the genre that you're um, that you're making. On the home tab, by the way, you can just see all of the most recent packs, um, and it's pretty much all sample packs here. But you've also got preset packs for drum and play, which is the two Loop Cloud plugins that come free in the Loop Cloud suite. And one of them is a drum instrument, and the other one is a sampler. So create your beats, create your melodies. And they come with a ton of presets. So one way then, yeah, is to search by <clears throat> your genre. And if you have this um, 
make sure the products are displayed here with this switch. <clears throat> you can get rid of them if you want to kind of maximize the results. Um, so you get related products to the genre showing at the top, and then you get related samples showing at the bottom. Um, so it's just trap everything right now, but of course you can then narrow it down by searching for different instruments like bass, like synth, and then whether it's a one shot and, or a loop and so on. Um, we're actually going to look in a pack that comes free for members this week, not part of the Stay, and Create, Stay Creative campaign, but just something we're doing as a nice thing for you guys, for all our members. So starting a new tab there in Loop Cloud, sorry, in case you missed that, and you, you start a new tab there to start a new search, whether it's for a new product or something else. Um, so, and then you type in the name of the product, and then it shows you the one you're looking for down below. <clears throat> and now you can like drill down into this pack so I can click on any tags like drum, click on loops, and then yeah, check out some of these trap loops. And like I said, because it's connected to Ableton Live, uh, you can't change the BPM, but it's now synchronized with Live. And the other thing is the audio anything you play out of Loop Cloud roots into Ableton Live. So if I unsolo stuff in here. What are we actually looping here? It's this bit. So let's loop that. <clears throat> Just get rid of this box for a minute. Nice. Um, now we could just, you know, add additional loops on top. We could go for a sub loop and uh, get rid of the products now. Uh, yeah, and sub loops. Uh, we can match the tempo and. Now, this is the point, obviously, we, when we need to know the key that we're working. We're working in A <clears throat> minor. Um, if you want to find out more about the track in a lot of detail, Ruxpin did a member live stream for everyone, <coughs> for our members, um, <clears throat> two or three weeks ago. Uh, you can find all of these in the member webinar playlist accessible via the members area on our site. If you are a member, by the way, already, and you, you, you've you seen this area, there is actually a bug with playlists at the moment on YouTube. Um, YouTube are working on it, um, but it means that any playlists that were embedded in a site just show as a sort of error message now where you click play and it says video not found. Hopefully that's going to be sorted by tomorrow. If it's not, then we're just going to have to embed single videos on the site for you. <coughs> but fingers crossed YouTube are going to sort that. Um, it doesn't mean you can't watch any of them, by the way. You can just click on the, the link and just go off to YouTube and watch them. It just means you can't watch them embedded in our site at the moment like you like you could do before. <clears throat> anyway, uh, yeah, so let's find a sub loop and this time let's make it in A. Now you could use the player to do this. You just have to choose your key down here and then click on the auto and then it will transpose any of these that aren't in A to A by transposing them up or down the relevant number of semitones. So this is a low sub already, so going down five semitones makes it kind of ridiculous. So a better way of doing it really is just to choose to search for sub loops in A. So you don't have to do any transposing. I quite like just the kind of simple ones.
Um, yeah, and then you can just add kind of more loops over the top. We go for like a hat loop. Um, trap. And match the tempo. I've got one I favorited already up the top here, so it's probably going to be a nice one. Um, you can also, uh, that's the, if you if you really like any of these samples, you just have to click on the favorite button there, and it adds it to your favorites. So when you click on favorite on a search, it will only search for the ones you favorited. So it really is like amazing organization of your, your samples, not just your samples, but samples in the store as well, everything available in the cloud. Um, so yeah, just click on the heart here and then it shows me anything I've uh, favorited. So you can see that hat loop is top in the list here. Let's check out some others first. Can use the little sliders here just to bring the level up and down. Sounding pretty good. So the only problem obviously using a loop for the baseline is that um, it's sticking to one key. So if you want to add kind of other sounds, other melodies on top, especially ones from the original, then you might want to um, make a bass line that actually follows the harmony of the, the original parts. Um, but before I show you that, I'm just going to show you how you get these sounds out of Loop Cloud now. <clears throat> you can, as I said, you can keep building up sounds in Loop Cloud, um, or you can just use it to kind of get a few loops going try out some different ones until you find ones that go really well together. And then when you like them, purchase them if you need to using whatever Loop Cloud points. Um, and then drag out, I'm just gonna drag out the originals here. And now to do this in a moment in Loop Cloud, you hold down the Alt key <clears throat> and then drag on the original switch and then it drags out files for all of those. And then when I come in here, again, hit the Command key, put them on separate tracks, and then you've got your loops in your door and just select them all bring them down because they're original samples so they're all really loud as you can see all normalized as i was saying before so you need to bring them down by a good 10 db ish so yeah you Got some beats in there. You've got some, you know, the start of a few interesting ideas. Um, <clears throat> so what now? <clears throat> let's look at how you let's see how you create your own beats, actually, before we get into the harmonies. So I'll show you some slightly more advanced tips for working with Loop Cloud, where we can actually create beats using one shots or mostly one shots. <clears throat> and then after that, We'll come back into live and I'll show you how to um, work out the notes, the harmony and the chords that are in the existing parts here. Um, and then how you use them to sequence the sound. In this case, we're going to use uh, Krotos Simple Concept, which is the plugin that's free with the Loop Cloud offer, part of the Stay Creative campaign. Um, and then we're also going to use this spread, which is one of the free ones from Plugin Boutique for stereo imaging. Uh, and then lastly, I'll show you Ozone um, ozone elements being free with the Stay Creative campaign as well, Isotope's mastering tool. So let's go back to Loop Cloud. And <clears throat> I'm just gonna clear all these tracks now, which I do by right-clicking. You can see you can clear individual ones or you can clear all. So I can kind of start again here I'm going to click plus up here and I'm going to do a new search for kick, one shots, and trap. See, the way I uh, search for items is by typing into the search and then clicking on the tags that pop up below. You can just go into the menus, do it that way, click on things there. So it's kind of nice. 
Now we're going to want to create a loop here. Uh, if you don't want to create your own, of course you can just go into the pattern menu and use the pattern presets here to sequence one. Like for example, there are trap ones. You can just click there. And you can just step through a few of those till you find a pattern that works. Uh, but I'm going to reset that and I'm just going to do my own one. So we're just going to make it one bar long to start with. You can see on the bar ruler here, we've got the beats and bars, just like in the door. And if you want to duplicate slice, just right click it and choose duplicate. I'll use the keyboard shortcut, command D, or just hold down command and drag it. So there's quite a few different ways there. And yeah, just get rid of slices by clicking on them, hitting delete as normal. Um, you can trim them and they all trim according to the grid as you can see there. <clears throat> you can add fades and you can drag the top to change the level. And undoing resets it as you can probably see there. Um, so let's add a new sound now. I didn't really explain the multi-track thing, I just kind of breezed through it didn't I? So any of you beginners might have been a bit surprised by why I was adding different sounds on top of each other. Uh, but the player down here is multi-track, so you can have eight different tracks, all with their own individual samples on, which is why you can make your own pretty complex arrangements within here and then save them as session files using the edit menu. Um, and you don't need to make whole tracks, obviously it's not really designed to do that, it's designed to come up with fairly comprehensive ideas. Um, and they might be, you know, the intro to a track, they might be a breakdown, they might be a beat. Um, and I've started using it to create templates. So you can, you know, create all of your all of your beats, like for example, a house groove where you've got your kick, um, your lead, snares and claps, you've got your hats and etc. Or even just the trap one we're creating now. And then you just load it up when you come to a, a new session, switch out some of the samples and export them as loops to have your you have your brand new groove, you know, ready to go. So it's really, really quick and easy. But yeah, selecting track two here and then starting a new search. Um, I could type in everything again or I can click at the top here. You can save the current search, which I've actually already done. It's down the bottom here. Um, and then when you go to a new tab, you can just click on that one to bring it straight up. Uh, and then I'm just going to switch it from kick to snare. And this one's just going to be on beat three. It's a nice interesting one. Let's maybe go with that one for now. Um, might add another kick actually. Yeah. I'll keep it there for now, slightly less syncopated. Kind of like it there on that 16th, but maybe we'll change that in a bit. Um, now let's create a kind of hat to go with it. Actually, I could do the same again, just bring up that search, change it to hat. And that one's fine for now. Um, so many options here for creating a hat pattern, for example, coming in choosing one of the patterns. And of course there are uh, trap ones. There's ones with all sorts of different um, Nice, it's quite a loud one though, let's bring it down. So that's pretty nice. Um, we could create our own one though that's a little bit more interesting. Although Trap obviously does tend to have that kind of loud and um, full on kind of hat. But I'm going to reset it and just create my own here. So I'm going to set the grid to 16ths. I'm going to bring this down so it's a 16th long. I'm going to add a fade as well so it's really short. Uh, and that means actually. If I trim it even shorter by holding the shift key, 
because it snaps to the grid naturally. But if I, yeah, if I trim it whilst holding the shift key there, I don't have to turn off snap to grid or change the grid size. I can just trim freely. Um, and then, actually, I'll undo that. And then I can just, uh, actually, I won't make it so long. So I can change the level a bit more easily. And then if as it, if it's smaller than the grid, the way I can duplicate this, instead of clicking on it and hitting duplicate, which will put it off grid, I just have to drag over it. So the grid step, the whole grid step is selected. Then I can hit duplicate and go out over across for the full, full bar. So I'm going to get rid of the ones that are conflicting with our main drums. Uh, and then I'm going to change the level of these to make them a bit more interesting and add a little bit more of a groove. Say it might even work with some open hats if you trim it really short. I've made them a little bit longer there, so some of these with no kind of transient, just really noisy ones, <clears throat> don't really work. But you can edit it so that pretty much any hat sample or any noise sample or anything would kind of work with this. And of course, you can add effects here if you want to. You could go in and add delay, for instance. Actually, probably a free, really short one might work. Could also add a reverb to the clap. Um, every track gets its own effects chain. Again, which is why you can really be quite, um, you can really create quite comp comprehensive ideas in here, really fleshed out kind of sessions. Uh, you can see we've got some different presets here, like percussion enhancer, or actually let's do the snare medium room. It's quite well balanced. Um, let's go to track four now and let's just add a uh, top loop. Obviously it's quite nice just to play around with loops as well. So I'm going to go trap and let's see what's here. gonna get rid of our hats for a minute by muting them so I can hear what's going on so it's got some nice sounds in it um, if you want to just sort of chop out any bits then you can use the tools up here scissors tool for instance um, but you can actually also get to that via a shortcut by holding down alt Oops. You see when I hold down Alt, it switches to the scissors temporarily. So I can come in and just slice some of these out. So get rid of that one, which is kind of conflicting with the clap. And yeah, just quickly kind of chop these out. Like so.
if you're finding any bits that are a little bit kind of quiet in there, you could always create a slice there by chopping, switch to the scrubber tool, and then just find a new sound to add there. Maybe just one of these hats instead. It's the same one, isn't it? Let's try one of those. Could also try reversing a bit. It's always a nice thing to do. The reverse tool. Nice. Uh, yeah, so you can just get as creative as you like in here, mess around with loops, um, chop them up, reverse bits, uh, even repitch them as we're going to do in a sec. Um, <clears throat> What else? Yeah, let's let's get into that now. Actually, let's um, find this sub loop that I was working with earlier, which is this one here. Now, this is from the Atlanta Trap Pack that we're giving to members for free this week. Now it's not in A, it's in F. So when I hit the auto, it starts to get a bit ridiculously high. So what I thought would be quite cool to do is just to show you how you resequence it. Um, so you go to a new track here, and I search for sub one shots, <coughs> and Again, I'm going to search for them in A, so I'm going to click on A. Let's mute this so we're not getting two subs. Let me start with that one. And then I'm just going to kind of mimic the rhythm that's happening in this one, which is on here, and it's halfway through beat three there. Only the tempo is shown a bit different there because of... so I have to work it out by ear. So yeah, it's one there, one there. It's the same rhythm as this, just to play it again. But what I thought would be quite cool to do, because this one has these interesting little kind of pitch sweeps going on here, in these little notes that go on before these ones. So I thought we could keep them in there. So I'm just going to mute these for now by double clicking them. And in this one, I'm just going to get rid of that one, carry that onto there. one of these other subs. It can take a little while to find the exact kind of sub that you want. Obviously some of them are just fully sustained, some of them have pitch bends in. Um, let's just keep this one for now. You get the idea. You can um, have a play around with it yourself. What we're going to do now, though, is we're going to repitch some of these to kind of create a slightly more interesting baseline. So I'm dragging over it, I'm going to duplicate it out a few times so it's eight bars long. Yeah, I should have probably set the grid back to auto when you're zoomed out. It's probably a bit safer if you want to make sure things are going to remain on the grid when you start copying and pasting like that. Then we can go to the transpose tool here and then just repitch bits to create an interesting kind of melody with the bass. Like I said, with, with Trap, I 
generally if you want it to be a bit ruder you you know you may not want to create a drop that has a melodic bass that's kind of dancing around you might want to create something a bit more static like that first bass loop that we used which is just same note but kind of creating a dynamic sort of rhythm um, but I'm just showing you an alternative here if you want to create something that follows a melody of some kind so we're gonna add one here I thought we have it going up to the third down to the it's the fourth and then I think ending on the fifth Um, yeah, we'll just match that again. Whoops. Cool. Um, <clears throat> we could even we could even add that kind of cool triplet pattern that they had here in that original loop, which we could add here by going into sixteenths, <clears throat> sending it back to sixteenths, duplicating that a few times. I think that's the right rhythm. Yeah. Nice. Sweet, so got some nice parts going on there. Um, now, should we just export these? Actually, there's one other thing I was going to do with this loop that I wasn't liking, and it's just um, I don't like the fact that this symbol here is overlapping with the kick, so I'm just going to chop that out. Now it's nice and clean on the kick there. Kind of a fairly sort of obvious in a way but um, very important production tip there is just to really watch what sounds you've got overlapping with each other it's all too easy especially if you're stacking loops upon loops to just have way too many sounds overlapping and that's what makes the mix very noisy and, and messy you know uh, if you are chopping up loops sometimes you get little clicks here and there but you can add little fades like that to make sure you don't get that I don't think it's really happening in this instance but Cool. So let's get these loops out then. Um, I'm going to bring them all out and see how that sounds with the hat now. Yeah, not bad. Probably try it with the other loop as well, see how that sounds. Um, now let's drag it out processed. So <clears throat> I'm going to hold down the Alt key, drag out processed, then we got our six loops. Switch over to live, hold down command again, and there we have them all in the project. So there's our kick. Oh yeah, I was gonna do a few more edits to the kick. I completely forgot about that now, but of course we can do them in live as well, just to add a few kind of ghost kicks. Get something in here maybe. <clears throat> maybe, is that gonna be too fast? Oops, sorry, I need to get rid of these ones. <clears throat> Just turn off these for a minute. These were the loops we dragged in. Yeah, we got some interesting ideas coming up there. Let's duplicate this out a bit more. <clears throat> um, so obviously when you've created a bass line like this you need to make sure it's kind of going with the other parts so the chords here this one clashes a little bit um, you can always just try sort of transposing them so I've chopped that one out there just like I did before selecting over it hitting command E to split it and then I'm going to get in with the transpose a bit 
sorry, this one here. So I can hear there that the bass note in that matches our actual bass line. So it's a kind of slightly more interesting. We could even just duplicate that over, take it up by two so it follows the bass line as well. that out as well. Um, <clears throat> add the vocal back in, check that should still sound all right. And so do it actually. <clears throat> both of these up a little bit. So yeah, we're starting to develop a few ideas now. Um, of course, I don't want to get too tweaky here. It could go on forever. And I'm going to move on now to showing you the kind of last things I wanted to show, which is um, the plugins. So we got Simple Concept by Krotos and Spread and also Ozone uh, Elements. But before we do that, I'm just going to show you how you could work out the actual harmony in the original. Um, I mentioned already it's in A minor. Now the, the great thing about A minor is that the notes in the scale are all the white notes, so you don't need to worry about any of the sharps and flats, which can make things a bit more complicated. Um, yeah, as long as you stick to the white notes there, you're going to be you're going to be safe. Um, but to work out the actual chords themselves, um, you could watch the Ruxpin live stream, of course. Um, but I'm just going to pick out the original keys. This is so. This is the loop that the entire track was kind of based on. Just drag it over here. Check out if it's really um, <clears throat> loud for you guys or too quiet. <clears throat> Sorry, I really haven't been looking much in the chat, have I? I hope you guys are okay. Um, G Brown, this is valuable. Most of the look at loops of frowning face when something wrong. Using them creatively is a must. Get your own way. Yep, absolutely. Microfeet can do that on almost every synth. Okay, looks like you guys have been chatting and answering your own questions. Nice one. LA Winter digging the beat. Nice one. Um, sweet. Yeah, nice one, guys. Glad you're, glad you're digging it. Bye to anyone who's going. Nami, bye. Hey, Peter. Hey, Lloyd. Hey, Felix. Nice one, guys. So, um, yeah. Here's our, here's our original loop then. Like I said, this is, this is the chord sequence that Ruck's been created to come up with a whole track. So it's kind of the backbone of the harmony. So there's a few different ways you could work out the notes. You could just right click it in live, for example, convert harmony to new MIDI track, and that will make Ableton, you know, have its best crack at working out the MIDI notes that are in that. Another way is using Scalar 2, which is a great plugin <clears throat> from Plugin Boutique. Um, and there's an audio version actually, so you can just drop it straight onto an audio track. And it will then detect any audio you play into it. So just have to make sure the threshold's high enough here, <clears throat> or low enough rather, the signal's high enough to go over it. Just gonna drag it right down to make sure. Uh, and then put it in record 
Doesn't like that last chord, let's go again. There we are. <laughs> it's obviously a very low signal. Um, and yeah, and then Scalar lets you know what, what chords they are. You can hear them nicely played on a the piano there. Uh, now this is a much, well, slightly better way I'd say of doing it than in live where um, live struggles a little bit to identify when there are very complex sounds going on. If it's a fairly simple sound and all of the frequencies are quite nicely isolated in the signal, then it's going to be able to identify the MIDI notes quite easily. It's slightly more complex sound, it's going to struggle a lot more. Um, so this will really kind of pull out the, the chords for you, which is really awesome. And I'm not going to go into the plugin too much right now, but when it's detected it, you can then just... Actually, I could have just selected them in one go and dragged them there, but you just drag them down to the chord builder. And then you can do all sorts of things like add voice grouping to have them arranged in sometimes a slightly more pleasing um, sequence. And you can try a few different ones there, dynamic plus octave, loads of different ones. Uh, or you can come in here and edit it and just play with the inversions yourself. So you can change the octave with the top row, the inversion with the bottom. So inversion means <clears throat> literally you're just switching around the order of the notes. So if I want the, the E to be on the bottom, say, of this G chord, at the moment it's the third note in there, I need to then switch to the next inversion and then the next one, and then we, there we have it. Bring this D down as well. That's working nicely. It's keeping the E on the bottom, which is quite nice. It's very nice to kind of group chords so you keep a kind of consistency there. So they're all amassed in the same area. You know, not necessarily if you want to create a bit more of a melody on the top or some sort of shift up or down, but it can be nice to try and like group them together like that. Um, I'm actually just going to edit it though. I could edit the MIDI after, but I'm just going to right click here, edit chord, just get rid of that B on top. So that they're all four note chords now. Nice. I'm just going to drag that out. Actually, I'll create a MIDI track first and then drag that out onto it. No, don't import timing information. And yeah, and now we've got our MIDI here. Uh, I'm going to change the timing to match here. So it's a bar of each chord here and then two bars of the last one. So I'm just going to go down into the MIDI editor, select these and then drag them out. There we go. So drag it out so it's a four bar loop and then make this last one two bars. A bar, bar, and then two bars. There's our chord sequence. Uh, now let's add simple concept. And let's choose a kind of pad here. Bring the level down a bit. Solo that one. Really wonky sound there. Um, got some great little presets in here. It's a very, very simple cut down synth, but that can be really nice. Um, it gives you three macro controls and then an ADSR envelope. Um, so yeah, you can play around with these.
really long release on that one. <laughs> and you can also just click on the tweak it there and tweak it creates a kind of slightly random variation on the patch. Now it's not so nuts that it, you know, completely randomizes it to hell, um, but it's a really nice way of just adjusting it slightly to see if it can fit a bit better with your track. So click it, you see it, throw the dice there. Yeah, really nice little little feature there. Now another really cool feature here is this audio input one. If I select that one, you can hear now it's kind of really filtered down. And it now basically allows you to send an audio signal into it to create a kind of really interesting pattern. Um, so we're just going to go back to Loop Cloud and just solo this track here, track seven, and just grab any any drum loop, basically. Doesn't really matter. It could be one from your library, you don't need to buy one or anything. Top drums. Let's find something that looks a little bit more kind of syncopated. Let's go with that one. Drag it out. You can see I can also just drag things out from the browser, by the way, so that, that can be an easy way of getting a an original sample out. Uh, yeah, so we're just gonna <clears throat> turn this one off and then on Krotos here we go to the sidechain input and we select that one 28 and I think that's it and hopefully you can see that every time we get one of these little peaks here from the signal it's triggering the filter so this is a filter enveloper, um, but yeah, very cool. That's really nice. Uh, and now we could get in here and we could add some spread. Um, I was going to arpeggiate it. Let's try arpeggiation as well. Let's go into the MIDI effects and add arpeggiator. See, see how it sounds with that too. 16th note. <laughs> So that's pretty cool. I could drag that in. Um, I'm actually going to add spread on there as well. So, this is the so just to recap there. A uh, simple concept is the plugin that comes for free with Loop Cloud on top of the two months free that they're giving uh, subscription on the artist plan. You also get this plugin and there are two further plugins that you get with Plugin Boutique, <clears throat> which are Spread <clears throat> from DJ Swivel, <clears throat> which you need to add to this track. And this is just a really nice little stereo imager tool. <clears throat> and <clears throat> sorry, <clears throat> you can see how you, how you get low, mid, and high bands, and then just like control over the width here. So you can have the high frequency spread really wide, the mid spread a little bit, and maybe the bass stays where it is. And you can also use this max sort of master control here to control them all at once like so 
Let's have a listen to that. Awesome. Um, I'm actually going to add Ozone onto here. So Ozone is the other plugin you get. And I'm just going to add the image. I've got Ozone 8 here. <clears throat> but um, you get Ozone 9 elements uh, with the campaign, and that gives you the imager, the equalizer, and the maximizer. And also, you can use the mastering assistant. So you can use, yeah, you can basically create <coughs> kind of cool <clears throat> basic masters with that. Well, I say basic, I mean, it's a really, really awesome, comprehensive plugin. And I imagine, I think Elements is the dynamic EQ as well. It's got a brilliant dynamic EQ in there. Uh, with the mastering assistant, um, which you don't get on this one because it's just the module, but um, on the on the main plugin, which I'll show you in a moment, the mastering assistant actually analyzes all of your parts and applies the relevant settings for them. So it finds little problem frequencies and applies dynamic EQ to, to get rid of them, which is really, really awesome. But yeah, here I'm just adding up the imager module so you can see. Completely mono sound before. Really lovely, nice wide sound here with spread after. Um, and it's great to have that sort of multi band aspect there. Um, so you could only, you know, spread out the high frequencies if you want to. Very nice. Um, so let's just check that out with our beats. I don't know how it's going to go with the harmonies that we added because obviously we made our own kind of bass line down here. So yeah, we changed the harmonies with the repitching of the synths there. Maybe take them out. So yeah, we'd have to change this. Obviously, this was made to be exactly the same as the original, whereas the baseline that we made before is shifting about a little bit differently. Um, so yeah, I'd probably create something slightly different to go to go with that. Um, so let's just quickly show the. Shall I get rid of them? Let's quickly show the uh, <clears throat> actual most mastering plugin. Obviously, I can't really demo mastering <laughs> on a track that I've only just started. So there's not. Um, it's not really the best uh, example of what it can do. But if I was just playing playing my loop here. <laughs> You can just click the master assistant here. Choose like what you want to be doing with it. If you just want to be streaming it, um, click next. And then when it's done, you just click accept, and then it applies those settings to the effect. And here you can see you've got some equalizer, you've got some dynamic EQ, as I was talking about. Obviously, it's picked out quite a few issues there, of course, because I haven't mixed this in any way. So like I say, it's really not uh, a good example of um, uh, you know how to approach mastering. Definitely don't do this. Don't don't uh, slap a, a mastering tool on your mix before you've even begun to mix it. <laughs> Wait until you've got everything else right, and then use that mastering tool to to get it perfect. After that, um, but yeah, you can see how it works here. Uh, it applies these different modules, which you can click on and then tweak. We do actually have an ozone course done by the great Joshua Casper, um, and he takes you through all of the all of the modules. Um, so you can learn all about them on that course. 
course, if, you, if you're not a Purdue State member and you're just coming in to, to check out what's going on, then as I explained at the start, this whole live stream has been to show you what's available in the Stay Creative campaign, which we're running at the moment. Um, like I said, if you're not a Purdue State member, then that will give you two months free on our website, uh, access everything, access all courses, full, full membership. Um, and also, uh, if you go to the Stay Creative campaign page, you can see all of the other stuff that you get in the campaign, which I've been running through in this stream. Uh, you can watch this stream if you just joined us and you missed it. Just go back and watch it again. Um, I've covered quite a lot. I've covered um, how to sort of get going with the remix uh, using specifically the stems that we're providing in our current member remix comp available for all Produce Tech members where you can win plugins, you can win a, a year of membership, you can win live feedback from myself and from Ruxpin, the original artist who made the awesome track over you. <clears throat> you can also win a ton of plugins from Plugin Boutique, um, which you can find on our, on our blog find out the full list but it's a great list there um, and you can win loop cloud points thousand points to the winner 500 to two runners up um, yeah and i've just taken you through all of the plugins that are available with the stay creative campaign so we've got ozone elements uh, we've got crotos synth through loop cloud and we've also got um, dj swivel spread available from plugin boutique and the other thing you get in the campaign is also two months access to Beatport Link subscription, which is fantastic if you want to just try out getting into DJing. Um, it gives you access to all of the tracks on the Beatport store and also their DJ web app. So you can actually DJ. Not only can you access all the tracks and build playlists and do all that, but you can now DJ online with their web browser, which is an amazing little tool for... I say little tool, it's a comprehensive DJ tool um, you know, as comprehensive as a lot of DJ software. So you can use it easily to perform tracks at an after party, if you're available to have them in your country right now, <laughs> or, you know, an online after party, you can stream to people on Zoom uh, or whatever. So um, yeah, really, really cool app there. <clears throat> and that's everything in the Stay Creative campaign. I think I'm going to leave that there slightly overrun, but not too much, which is nice. Um, let's see what you're all saying in the chat. Someone sent Rob some Ricola. <laughs> yeah, man, I, I don't know what's going, going on with my voice these days. <clears throat> I did have a cold over the weekend, so partially that, I guess, but I swear it's the air in my flat, the dust, who knows, the Berlin air. I always thought it was good air here. We have so many parks, but, um, but it is a city and it doesn't have enough electric cars in it yet. Um, can you show the sidechain part of Simple Concept again, says LA Winter. Yes, yes, let me show you that, buddy. So, um, see, so yeah, it was just down here. So here's the, the MIDI that we're using to play Simple Concept. Just open it up again. And let's just forget about this track for a minute. And let's just play like a pluck sound here with our arpeggiator. So the arpeggiator is um, turning it from static chords. So look. Turning it from those kind of static chords to let's choose something a little bit. Um, To, yeah, to something a little bit more rhythmic. Um, but then if you choose one of these audio input ones, it then just applies a kind of filter over the whole thing. So you can hear those high frequencies are sort of filtered out. And now if you send a signal into it, which you can choose in this little sidechain section, obviously this will work slightly differently depending on the door you use, but in live, you get the little sidechain thing in Logic you get a sidechain thing as well on the kind of header bar on the top right. Um, and yeah, you just select whatever track that you want to route into it. <clears throat> so in this case, this one, zero. And, and now you can hear every time you hit getting these little transients there, they're popping the filter up 
So it's just like a filter envelope. Obviously, you could do this in live as well, but it's nice to have it incorporated into the synth. You could also, you know, come into the loop and you could select a different part of it. Like you could choose a smaller part to loop here. So I'm, if I select kind of a regular amount, like a like a whole. Here I'm selecting a kind of quaver. But if I go slightly off and select a kind of dotted quaver, then it's going to play a bit more of a cross rhythm. Cross rhythms are always cool, aren't they? Always a bit more interesting. Nice one. Sorry, getting a bit into the track there. <laughs> uh, cool. Hope you enjoyed that, LA Winter. Um, everything is better in multiband. Absolutely. Um, yeah, nice one, guys. Really hope you've enjoyed the stream. Um, yeah, make sure you check out Stay Creative Promo. Grab all the bits while you still can. This is the last chance. Get those free plugins. Get those loop cloud points um, and subscription and beat port and etc etc thank you guys thank you amado um thank you everyone thank you g brown thank you ellie winter magnus everyone in the chat there lloyd brown music felix rk welcome just subbed to the courses last night nice one yeah thanks everyone hey brandon um hope you enjoyed the stream thank you beyond gratitude great name um yeah cheers everyone cheers magnus i guess that's all from me uh so yeah hope you enjoyed the stream i will see you in future ones uh next week i think we're gonna have a stream from uh paul maddox one of the most awesome tech house and techno uh producers on our site um if not it'll be the week after and i'll do the one next week um but yeah we'll be doing them over the next two weeks um and yeah loads more awesome courses to come over the next few months and live streams and then we'll have our remix comp results next month uh, and live feedback to the winners and the shortlisted tracks so looking forward to that and of course our community site which is on the way which is going to be completely awesome as well really hoping to get that out in april if not um first first thing in may but yeah, that's going to be a great thing. So yeah, love to you all. Thank you for watching. 